The dose and the fractionation of radiation is uh, calculated in a way that we try to avoid uh, the normal tissues as much as possible. So what we did in the past, we did a lot of experimental work in order to individualize the dose of radiation. And that is a, a quite good way to have the same toxicity and to increase the dose as much as possible. This works only in, in the non-concurrent schedule. From the moment that you give chemotherapy together with radiation, um, there's no uh, argument at all, and we have published this recently even, there's no argument at all to increase the dose above 60 grain 30 fraction in an individualized way. The only thing what you then do it to is to make it either more complex or to make it more toxic. So in the framework of immune treatment, we have the results of the Pacific study, obviously, and it is shown that there the addition of the Gervalumab after chemoradiation really increases survival on the long run. So there's no question about that. At this moment, uh, also according to the, 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 the standard of care and take into account the RTOG 0617 study from the US, probably it's better to give them 60 gray in 30 daily fractions as a, a standard of care schedule. When it comes to sequential chemoradiation, then there's level 1 evidence that acceleration is better and you could use 2.75 gray per fraction up to 66 gray. And that's an accelerated uh, way to give radiation and it's always uh, according to individualized schedules for the, for the uh, tissues at risk, so like the lungs, the esophagus, the heart. There are three side effects which are the most important ones to, to be discussed. That is infection, esophagitis and pneumonitis. And there are some other side effects which should dis be discussed as well, but that depends more individually to the place of the tumor, uh, what you expect from side effects in certain situations, depending also on some comorbidities or the diseases of patients. But in general, infections, of course, which relates to neutropenia due to chemotherapy. And at the same time, as, it, as the occurrence of neutropenia, patients may have esophagitis. And because of the esophagitis, this is a, 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 a way to, for entrance of uh, bacteria and viruses in the bloodstream. And hence, they, they can provoke septicemia and even that. So that's important. Second is the esophagitis which occurs about after about three weeks and heals after six to eight weeks. And we discuss with the patient supportive care measures like medication, not only painkillers, but also PPIs to suppress gastric uh, um, acidity. Um, and also the, the need for um, food. So that's uh, nutrition advice from a dietitian from the onset before the problem start, because otherwise there will, be a there will be a decrease of the general condition of the patient and increase of infection susceptibility. And third, pneumonitis, which in most cases um, is uh, something what happens uh, two, to, uh, two months to six months after the end of treatment and can be handled by three weeks of corticosteroids. But I should stress that the most important thing to discuss with patients is quit smoking, good food and physical exercise. Now, specifically for radiation during the treatment, the most important side effect is esophagitis. So what we give them, first of all, prophylactically, we give PPIs. You know, because we know when the esophagus is irradiated, you have more reflux. So it's better to treat them like reflux esophagitis as well. And that means that the PPI should be given at least two or three months post uh, treatment as well. Second, nutrition is probably the most important one, not only to keep the weight of the patient um, constant, but even more important to increase the quality of the food because we know there's muscle wasting, there's a lot of protein need, probably between one and 1.5 gram of protein per kilogram per day. So that's massive. So the, need, so the nutritional support is very important because otherwise patients will have muscle wasting and cachexia even, and that is uh, to be uh, avoided, obviously. Um, and then that also fits in, into uh, the supportive care, taking into account physical exercise, some fitness and very importantly, quit smoking, because if you quit smoking, you decrease the probability for important side effects by 
And if you have it, you decrease also approximately by 50% the duration of the side effects. So you have every argument to quit smoking, but that's not easy for patients who smoked in most cases already 30 or 40 years.